the first one's here, does that mean we're gonna get the first fish? I hope so. Yeah. Okay, welcome everyone. We are fishing for cold salmon in the Harrison River with Mark. Uh, Mark's a local Fraser Valley guide in this area, and uh, it's late October, which is kind of, would you say that's the peak? This yeah, is kind of the peak for, run time for this river, yeah, it's yeah. starting to get to their peak time. Yeah, okay. And we're gonna, we got the, the spinning rods, we're gonna start with twitching jigs, and you say you got some fish the other day, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's get to it and set it up. First light bite. So. Yeah, and then we're gonna go explore. Okay, colors. I'm trying some twitching jig. That would be a good one. That's money. Using these uh, fishing jigs from uh, Jig Geek today. It's a local company. It's been doing really well. Oh yeah. <laughs> so lots of people have been asking me like, what kind of line I use for my spin for my spinning reel. So I got Power Pro braided line as a main line, 15 pound and it's connected to a section of cigar fluorocarbon and this is 15 pound as well. A little heavier than the spinning rods I'm using. The spinning rods only weigh between six and 10 pound, but um, I find that with the fluorocarbon, you gotta want, you wanna go a little thicker, just because, especially twitching with this rocks and stuff, you don't want abrasion to damage the line, so a little thicker would be nicer. So with these twitching jigs, you're just twitching. So you haven't, you're doing this movement to make the jig go up and down as it comes back two or two. And uh, that drop and the sudden pickup is what really triggers the cold salmon. It's quite deep here and it's fair amount of current. And uh, using a spoon spinner is not really feasible. I mean, it works. But um, using a twitching jig, which is heavier, it can get down to where the fish are. Find these fish to be closer to shore? Or? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll swim up the shoreline, but yeah. they, I've also caught them like underneath right, the boat. Right, right beside the boat. So, while we're targeting here, traveling fish, these aren't yeah. going to be holding fish. These aren't holding fish. fish. Ah, he snagged. <laughs> Have you tried the slingshot before, Rod? This, this is not what to do. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh my god. No, you're losing that one. Unless you want me to pull anchor and we just move and try to grab it. Move and go up? Yeah. I guess you just do that. Yeah. Snack. Okay, go to the back. We're gonna move to a new spot. <laughs> so just moved to a new spot. Excited about the fishing, but also excited about seeing all these eagles back here. Um, Harrison is. I guess known for the eagle population when they show when the salmon show up. I mean, these birds are just feeding on the uh, on the spawning salmon as well. Good to see. When are my family? Lots of juveniles. Well, well yeah, they follow their parents. You yeah. Know, depending how many babies the parents have in a year, and then they they the babies follow their parents for a few years. Yeah. So there'll be like older babies and younger babies from the different years. Definitely fishing here, so oh, yeah. this is kind of where that grass patch is right there. It's where kind of where it ends. Oh, I had one. I think I'm walking for the out there too, so. Another one. Is that a coho? That looks like a monster. 
Yeah. <laughs> a nice little sockeye sound for the yeah. hair. There he goes. There he goes. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> flies when we're fishing here. There's another sockeye. Not exactly our target species, but nice fish. Quick release. Yeah. Come keep these fish, so it's better to get them back right away. We gave us a pretty good go. Um, some fish, but just not the right just species. Not the right ones. Yeah. We, I thought we saw coal at the very beginning, but they were all sockeye that we caught. So we're gonna leave those alone. We're gonna keep going. But I was telling Linda that this is beautiful out here. It's well, nothing beats this. Yeah, this is Ew. really nice. Yeah. We just need some fish. We'll find them. spot she's fishing now because they can't catch one. Oh. That's a, that's it. Come, 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 come. I know, where the fuck is it? <laughs> I grabbed them on the draft, like, as soon as they can't get out. Wow, oh, wow. <laughs> it's a wild one. That's alright. It's a coho, that's what we're yeah. after. Yeah, exactly. Leaves it here. Here, I'll show you something. Let's figure out how much it weighs. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. I got these pants in it. Yeah. Five pounds. Oh, yeah. That was a good surprise. Second yeah. cast of, the, of this spot. And this one grabbed it on the drop. Nice. Five pound cold salmon. There you go. It's wild, so we're gonna let it go really quickly here. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got both of us. Uh, woke me up now. <laughs> a little wet now, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, that was like as soon as it hit the water. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome, right at, at the yerk. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all we're using today. Twitching jig from Jig Geek yep. with a chartreuse head and purple body. Okay. Well, besides a few cold salmon that we hooked, it was really a surprise to see a few sockeye salmon taking the jig as well. Near the end of the day, I also encountered a Chinook salmon, a really big Chinook salmon, um, which was a, another surprise for me. So three species in one day, I couldn't really complain. 
we didn't really see a huge abundance of salmon on this particular day but that's just the way uh, salmon fishing goes in the falls in the river sometimes um, it really depends on the rain it rained a few days before that river level came up so a lot of fish actually moved up the tributaries from the harrison river the harrison river is located two hour drive east of vancouver and it's mostly accessed by boats, so you don't really see the effort that you will see at a busier river system such as the Veda River. Um, if you want to come out to here, I highly recommend it. Um, you want to go with the fishing charters such as what Mark does. So on the Mark fishing charters, I'll leave a link on the bottom. You can go click on him and uh, check it out. And uh, if you've never been fishing in BC before and want to try salmon fishing, um, you definitely want to get out to this area. It's not just about the salmon fishing. You definitely will get some fish in October and November, but it's also about just taking in the scenery and the wildlife in this area because it's relatively untouched considering that how close it is to Vancouver. Um, like I mentioned in the episode, there is a pretty big abundance of bald eagle in this area. They come over to this area to feed on the salmon after they die um, taking part from the spawning process and uh, it's quite a spectacular sight when you can see 30 or 40 eagle just feeding on the bank or sitting on the trees um, yeah it's a, even i've seen this for many many years it still excites me every time i see it for this particular episode we focus on twitching jigs which is not a really a new technique but it's been around for i say 10 plus years now um, relatively new to me but Typically, I tend to target salmon by casting spoons and spinners, but there is definitely a time and place for twitching jigs. Um, these, when you cast these out, you tend to uh, jerk up and down like that. So the salmon will tend to grab it when this jig is on the fall, when it falls down like that. So a lot of times when you pick that jig up again, uh, it's quite a surprise when you have a salmon hitting it hard and just turning away with the jig um, these coming <clears throat> these are made by jig geek it's a local company based in vancouver and there's a pretty good selection of colors that you can get so blue is another really popular color um, i like i like um, blue with the chartreuse head that you saw me using in the video here's another one here's a light blue tail with a, a pink body so lots of different colors and uh, they also make, uh, besides marble, uh, these twitching jigs, they also have rubber jigs, they also have uh, smaller jigs that you can use under the float, and uh, all of them apply to different species. You saw me using these, uh, the, the grub tail ones for pink salmon early in the season. Now we're using these ones for cold salmon, and uh, for the smaller jigs, that you can suspend on the float it's great for charm salmon as well so check them out i'll leave a link on the bottom for you to uh, go take a look at their selection as well um, one thing to note about <coughs> twitching jigs is that like i mentioned there is a time and place for it um, there, there is a small tendency to snack fish as well if you don't do this right so i tend to use this in water that's fairly slow moving and a little deeper so um, there's a lot more room for <clears throat> because you, you, you you're twitching so you're picking the jig up and down so you need quite a bit of water to work with shallow water doesn't work as well if you let this sink too far down to where the salmon are um, <clears throat> you're very likely to snag the fish by accident which is not what you want to do what I like to do is to keep this near the above the salmon on top of the water column and um, I tend to do a smaller twitch as well just keeping it up and just let it twitch near the top and this way when the salmon when it goes by the salmon the salmon will be looking up and um, if they're aggressive they'll come up and just grab it as you see in this video like that first cold salmon that I got um, they grabbed it on the drop just after I cast out and the few sockeye salmon that Mark got um, grabbed the loop grab the jig as well um, as it's being dragged back and uh, yeah so for whatever reason this action right here um, really triggers these fish to chase um, the jig and just grab it and uh, yeah it's a it's a technique that I look forward to keep doing and uh, I look forward to keep improving as well um, like I said I'm relatively new to this and uh, yeah so you can look forward to more episodes 
of me doing this in the future. Well, thanks for watching this episode and all of our Fall River Salmon Fishing episodes in the past two months. Um, it has been a pleasure doing them. Um, I have a couple more episodes coming out. It's not necessarily on fishing itself, but um, I want to talk a little bit more about fishing etiquettes and when it comes to how to respect these fish when you are enjoying them. Um, but yeah, so leave a comment on the bottom. I'd love to hear your feedbacks on twitching jigs. I'd love to hear your feedbacks on how your salmon fishing season has gone this season. Um, and uh, yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support. And until next time, good luck fishing.